consistently working at a weight that is no longer challenging doesn't get you better. Just going through the motions doesn't get you better. Understanding that you can probably lift heavier. Always keep safety in mind. Always keep technique in mind. We're not ego lifting here. We're talking about small increments of movement that you can perform safely while getting the most challenge out of it while you're doing it. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube. Go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates. The book comes out in September. What's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here with one of the most popular questions that I get, which is, how do I know if I'm lifting enough weight in my workouts? We're going to talk about what that means, how to gauge it, and how to make sure you're not going too hard, but also make sure you're getting the most out of your program. All right. Before we get into that, please subscribe. Click the little bell on the side there so you're notified every time I come out with a new video and help me help more people by getting the algorithm to acknowledge that we've got good stuff going on here and sharing it with more people out there in the world. How do you know if you're lifting enough? Okay. There's a, there's a few different ways. And the biggest thing to understand about weight lifting in particular is that the science for you, okay. Cause I'm assuming if you're watching this channel, you're not a professional bodybuilder. You're not someone who's competitive in powerlifting or Olympic lifting or something like that. You're trying to figure out how can I improve my overall quality of life and physical freedom? Okay. If that's the case, then I want you to start. We're going to start with this baseline assumption. Okay. Ignore the science geeks that are out there telling you the best way to lift weights. Okay. They don't matter. Okay. Whatever someone tells you the best rep range is for hypertrophy or the best rep range or percentage of effort you should be working out to get the most strength development out of your exercise. Who cares? Okay. The only thing that you need to really worry about is, are you consistently challenging yourself when you're lifting weights? That's your basic guideline. That's the fundamental thing you need to worry about. I don't care if you go in and you don't, you're not following a program. If you're not following a program, you go to the gym and you show up every day and you do something that is challenging and you feel like I just worked my butt off. And then you come in the next day and you do something different and you feel like I just worked my butt off and you feel it, right? You feel sore. You, you get to a point and this is one of the, the, the things, right? I'm pushing this weight. I'm doing bench press. I'm pushing this weight. I get to a point where I can barely get this last rep out and then I'm going to stop and take a break and then I'm going to do it again. Maybe I do that three times. Maybe I do that four times. Maybe it's with the weight that I can do 20 reps. Maybe it's with the weight I can do eight reps, whatever it is. If you're pushing to that point where you're getting to what we call muscle failure and you feel like I can't lift this anymore, if I try to do one more rep, it's going to fall on my chest. And that, so then you stop, right? We want to be safe. Or you have a spotter and you have a spotter help you get that, uh, that additional rep in, whatever it may be. If you're doing that consistently, you're going to see improvement. It doesn't matter how many reps you're doing or what weight you're doing, what weight you're doing. If you're getting to that point of challenge each time, that's the number one thing, the foundational aspect of improving strength that I want you to understand, particularly if you're just an average Joe like me. Okay. So don't worry about the science of weightlifting. If you're just someone who's trying to improve their ability to function in their everyday environment, that's the first thing we're going to start with. Second thing we're going to start with. Understanding what that means. What does it mean to lift with an intensity that creates a stimulus of change or adaptation? Okay. So when we're lifting weights, the idea is that we're going to push our muscles to a point of fatigue where they are stressed because they can't perform the work anymore. Okay. It sends a signal to our body. We're being asked, it's being asked to do something that it can't perform. So then it has to adapt. To, so that it can perform it in the future. If you are consistently applying that, now this is a key part of this. It has to be consistent. Just doing it one time doesn't make it, make it happen. I can't go in, try to lift 150 pounds and my body can't do 150 pounds. 
So then the next time I come in, hey, now my body knows that I want to do 150, so now I can do 150. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Consistent application, consistent demand requires an adaptation. Okay. So if you are consistently asking your body to do more, it will start to adapt and start being able to do more over time. So that's the first, that's the second thing to understand. You have to force an adaptation. We know when we're forcing that adaptation, there's a couple of things to understand. You're going to get to a point when you're lifting the actual exercise where you can't move the weight anymore. That's a sign that you're getting to a physical limitation, a mechanical limitation. I cannot physically move this weight anymore. Okay. Then you take a break and you do it again. Now that's, that's going to be different for everybody. Maybe there's a point where um, you want to push and you're not sure how many you can do. And this is part of an, a whole nother evaluation. Maybe we'll do another, another thing about how to determine what reps you should be doing and things like that. Right now, I just want to get you to, to understand the concept of, of giving yourself a challenge. If I go in and I say, Hey, I want to do, I'm going to do 10 reps today. And I'm going to find a weight that's challenging for 10 reps. I do that for 10 reps. I get that last rep. I barely get that rep pushed out. Okay. It's very likely if I was at the, the, the maximum effort that I could be at for that last rep, if I try to do that same weight another time right after, it's very unlikely that I'll do 10 again. I might do eight, seven, maybe nine. Okay. So, but that eight that I do the second time is probably going to feel just like that 10 did the time before that. Cause my body's starting to get fatigued. Okay. And then if I try to do it again, maybe I'll get six, right? So I'm doing the same weight and I really maxed it out on that first one. That means I don't have as much in the tank to do the second set. I don't have as much in the tank to do the third set. So if I'm working at as close to hundred percent maximum effort as possible for whatever sets I'm doing, the sets may go down, but I'm working myself at that maximum percentage each time. So then maybe the next time, two or three weeks down the road, I come try to do that. Maybe I can do 10 for the first one and 10 for the second one. Cause I've told my body, I want to be able to do more and I've consistently applied that effort. Right. And then maybe a couple of weeks down the road, I can do 10, 10 and 10 all at that same weight. Now I can say, Hey, I've got 10, 10 and 10. I worked up to this weight that I could only do 10, eight, six a few weeks ago. Now I can do 10, 10, 10. Let me increase the weight. So I put five pounds on, I put 10 pounds on. Now I try to do 10. Maybe I get eight. And then six and then four, just by adding 10 pounds to it. Now I can say, okay, great. I'm going to keep doing this until I can get 10, 10, 10 again. Right? So we see how we, it's called progressive overload. I'm not every week. I'm trying to do something crazy and it doesn't have to be adding weight. When we talk about intensity, I can add intensity by trying to do more reps. So I'm going to say one way, and this is the way that I like to do my lifting and progressive overload is I like to do it by reps. I'll pick a weight and I'll do just what I said. I'm going to do. 10 reps at whatever the heaviest thing I can do at 10 reps is. And then I'm going to keep that weight on and try to do 10 reps again. I'm going to keep doing that week over week over week until I can do three or four sets of 10 at that weight. When I'm done with that weight, then I'm going to put five pounds on. I'm going to put 10 pounds on and I'm going to see if I can do that again. And I keep progressing. It may take me six, eight weeks to go from 10, eight, six to 10, 10, 10. And that's fine. Every week I try to do a little more. I may do the first week, 10, eight, six. Then I do 10, nine, six. I may do 10, nine, five. The last one may be a weird week and I did less on the last rep, right? I may do nine, nine, eight, right? So each one may be different, but I'm doing a little bit more in some of them than I did the week before. Just consistently applying extra reps at a weight is one way that I like to do it. Another way I like to do it is maybe I don't want to go to that maximum percentage. Maybe I want to go to, uh, I'm going to work where I think I can keep two or three reps in the reserve and I'm going to do, I can do this weight for 12. Let's say, let's just stay with 10. I can do this. I could do this weight for 10 and I know it'd be my max. Like I would be at a hundred percent effort if I, did, if I did 10 reps, but I'm only going to do eight because I know I can do four sets of eight consistently. Right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do four sets of eight. Boom. I did that. It was about 80%, 85% effort. I feel like I got good, a good workout in. Now, the next week, I'm going to come in. Maybe I'm going to try to do that for nine, increase the reps. Maybe I'm going to stay at eight and I'm going to say eight, 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 eight. I did four sets of eight last week at this weight. 
let me add five pounds and do four sets of eight at this, right? So now it's, it's within a range where I should be able to complete it as long as I don't jump too high. If I can do that, now I progress at small increments of the same rep scheme every single week. The reps don't change, the sets don't change, I'm just slowly incrementing the weight so my body adapts to the change in weight within that rep scheme. That's another way to do it as well, okay? So those are two suggestions. And basically the one thing I want you to take away from this is asking yourself, can I do more, okay? I don't know how many times, ladies, this is for you. Most of my clients are women over 40. In fact, I just had a, uh, somebody that I'm working with in my Discord channel who posted that they were watching somebody on Instagram. I love this kind of thing because this happens all the time. They were watching a lady on Instagram who's like 70 years old who was doing, I think, dumbbell bench or doing something with dumbbells. And she was using 50 pound weights to do her benches, her dumbbell bench press and or whatever exercise it was. And this lady in my group commented and said, watching her video made me want to try to go heavier. And I went from 20 pound dumbbells to 40 pound dumbbells to do the exercise. And I was amazed that I could do it. Okay. It is very likely I hear this kind of story all the time. It is very likely that you can go a lot heavier than you thought you could. And if you don't try, you'll never know. Number one trap, your workouts should only be at the same weight every week that you're doing a workout if you're changing the number of reps that you're doing. If you're not changing the number of reps that you're doing, then you should be increasing by small increments each week just like what I was talking about. It's great. If you're using a 20 pound dumbbell, 20 pound dumbbells to do your bench press. Okay. And you're trying to get to three sets of 10 and you can't do three sets of 10 at 20 pounds, then keep using the 20 pounds until you can get three sets of 10. Okay. If you get to the point where you can do three sets of 10 at 20 pounds, then it's time for you to not use 20 pounds anymore. You need 22 and a half pounds or 25 pounds. Okay consistently working at a weight that is no longer challenging doesn't get you better. Just going through the motions doesn't get you better. Understanding that you can probably lift heavier, right? Always keep safety in mind. Always keep technique in mind. We're not ego lifting here. We're talking about small increments of movement that you can perform safely while getting the most challenge out of it while you're doing it. Okay. I hope that helps guys. Just remember, you can probably do more, okay? I see it all the time. Uh, when I was working with people in person, one-on-one, -on -one, I regularly would give them a set of weights and they would look at me like, what are you doing? And I'll say, look, I've been watching you move. I can see what you're doing. I can see how well you're performing the technique. I can see the level of effort you're putting into this. You have five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 more pounds in you than you think you do. But if you never try, you'll never know, all right? So that is a part of progress, guys. I want you to understand this. A lot of the progress in our strength development has nothing to do with our muscles. It has everything to do with our willingness to try and see what happens, all right? Take it easy, guys. Hope that was helpful. Please, as always, subscribe. Click the little bell so you're notified next time I come out with a video, and I'll see you later. All right, guys, you know I am a fan of protein. You know that prioritizing protein is a key aspect to the fundamental concepts of nutrition. I highly recommend for those people who need the help in increasing their protein intake, Equip Foods Beef Isolate Protein Powder. They have a ton of different flavors, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, salted caramel, coffee flavor. It is the cleanest and most effective protein powder that I have ever used.